welcome back to Morning Express. We are on your health uh, this morning. And as you can see, the beautiful ladies with me in studio. I have on my immediate left, Catherine Bao, who's a, a psychotherapist. And you help us understand that a little bit more. <laughs> and Cecilia uh, Karanja as well, who's a founder of Fertility Kenya Foundation. And we'll talk more about that and uh, much more. Ladies, good morning and thank you for joining us. So Catherine, psychotherapist. <laughs> what is a psychotherapist? Yes. And uh, psychologist and counselor, we use all those names. Yeah? Right. Counselors, we tend to just address like first aid, mm -hmm. it's short term. Psychology is the study of behavior. Psychotherapy is where you have long term treatment where we are trying to change behavior. For instance, we'll use cognitive behavior or we'll use other methods like uh, interpersonal relationship conflict resolution mm -hmm. so you go to psychotherapy okay it's just the process of helping people change helping people change and we'll talk more about how you've helped many people uh, change but Cecilia let me come to you and talk to us about your story infertility yeah. is what we're focusing on uh, on your health uh, this morning and it is something you've experienced yeah. has hit home uh, for you and have a good understanding talk to us about your journey um, my journey has not been easy. Mm -hmm. um, I struggled through infertility for around over 10 years. I've been, uh, I've told the story before, I've been in marriage from one marriage into another one. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's not a very interesting thing when you're branded infertile or tasa in Kiswahili. Wherever you go, everyone wants to just, uh, to just talk about you. They're always pointing fig fingers on you. Mm -hmm. And even you, you don't find that happiness in the marriage. So basically what happens is um, as you're walking through the journey, you experience a lot of stigma. Yeah, like uh, in the marriage I was in, uh, there was uh, I was being beaten. It was very cruel in the f in the first marriage, just because I could not get babies. So um, it's a very traumatizing um, experience. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So was it? Had you uh, by the time you were trying to get pregnant, did you then get to find out why it is you were not able to conceive? Okay, when I got married in the, in, the, in the first marriage, we did a church wedding and it was so exciting. I knew in the first, first second year mm -hmm. I'll be pregnant automatically because I was not using any contraceptives. I have never used any contraceptives, so I knew automatically I will get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So the first year went, the second year went, the third year, that's when I realized what, what is happening. Mm -hmm. I need to go to the gyna. I went to the gynecologist, which we did some tests. We did the scan where they checked on my tubes. They saw that they were fine, but they found out that I, had fi uh, I did not have anything. I did a HSG whereby they saw the tubes were open. So um, she, I was just given uh, fertility tablets just to boost my, my, my fertility. I went home, took them for around three months. Then I waited for another one year. Mm -hmm. That is four years, nothing is coming up. Then um, I went back to, the, to my gyno. I told him, see, I'm not getting any kid. I've taken the medication. You said I'm fine, nothing is happening. So he said, this time we need to go with my then husband. We went with him and he was done some tests and then it was proven that he had low sperm count. That is why we could not. So you were not the problem? I was not the problem. So we started the treatment. The first month he took the treatment, the second month he stopped. So maybe because of their ego, there's this ego in them, they mm -hmm. don't want to, 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 to put it down. Mm -hmm. So, um, But all this time you were the one getting grief for not getting a baby from everybody, family and friends. Even the, their parents. It was you, not him. It was me. Despite having found that he's the one who... Yes, but you see, when you realize that he has a problem, you don't te go telling people that he's the one who has yeah. a problem. Yeah. You want to carry the burden, because already people are talking about you, they know that it is you. Now I don't want to go tell them and you know what? It's not me. It's somebody else. So I just used to carry the body. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember one day, um, the parents just uh, came and told me that I was just taking advantage. I wanted to take the dowry from them. They, I wanted to take, I'm just uh, using their, their son. I, I knew when I was married, I, I was getting married, I will never get kids. That really hurt me. But I, I didn't tell them anything, because that time I had realized that 
I did, I was not the problem. Then, because uh, he was very, he was always beating me and all this. We, one day we went uh, to the police station and it ended there. Yeah, so the mother, the parents were there and they told me they never want to see, to see me. I am a, I am a Tassa and uh, I am an infertile woman who just came to take advantage of their son. Wow. And that was the last. So we'll go to the next one shortly, but let me first bring you in, Catherine. Up to that point, talk to us about what you're hearing because that is heavy for anyone to have to go through, to have to carry that burden. And at the end of the day, no one is even appreciating the fact that at least it's not even you with a problem. Yeah. Unfortunately, the society is never prepared for this. Mm -hmm. The society expects when you get married, you get kids. After one year, they ask, when next? What happens for the woman who's not able to conceive mm -hmm. is totally different from what the man will experience. Emotionally, for the woman at that particular time, there is the shock, there is the anxiety, there is the trauma of am I able to do this, which affects their self-esteem too, mm -hmm. which can also cause depression in the process. The woman who cannot give birth all, almost goes through a process like someone who's lost something. They are grieving. So they have all the processes of grief, denial, mm. uh, bargaining, depression, anger. They'll have all that process. Right. For the man who is infertile, is totally different. He might be able to snap out of it quicker than the woman because it's not expected of him as per se. Mm -hmm. The society expects the woman to be the carrier of the child. So men are not nurtured in a way to process in terms of talking. So men will avoid the topic or they will actually accept this is not happening, move on faster than the woman. Mm. But for the woman during this period, unfortunately, it's stressful. And for this particular case, she was not uh, the one who had the problem. Now, the stress levels also can cause hormonal imbalance, which, which can, can cause even, yeah, infertility. infertility. So during that process, what we normally say, it's necessary for the couple or even the woman to get psychosocial support. They might get the medical support, but they also need to get the psychosocial support because they do not know what's happening. Now, mm. that's where we come in, trying to work with their thoughts of themselves. How are you dealing and how do you think of yourself? Do you think of yourself as a lesser person because okay. you can't give birth? Mm. And the other bit is, how do we move forward? All right. Yeah. Cecilia, did you seek any counseling? Did you get any help at this time? Um, the only help that we went for is uh, the the... the the harassment part of it, when he went very, very brutal, we went for counseling once. And uh, the first session, they go through sessions. Mm -hmm. We just went for the first session. The second one, he said he'll never want to go back. So the end, marriage ended? Yeah, the marriage ended, and that was it. Yeah. And um, now, immediately after eight months, I jumped into another one, and I knew now I have to get a baby. Because the doctor told me I didn't have a problem, and so now I need to get a baby. Uh, within the, the first six months, nothing was happening. So mm -hmm. I decided, let me go back to the, 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 the doctor and get to see what is happening. Mm -hmm. So when, when I went back, I found that now I have blocked tubes and I have fibroids. Then I asked my doctor, you're the same person who told me that I don't have blocked that tubes. Okay, yeah. And now you're telling me I have blocked tubes and I have fibroids. How can that happen? So he tried to explain to me that it happens, yeah, those, that we get infections and at times we can get the blockage. And with the fibroids, once you stay for a long time without conceiving, it pretends that there's a pregnancy. So the fibroids de develop because I was not getting younger. I was 24 when I was getting married now. I'm past 30 when I'm get, getting married in my second marriage. Mm. So um, uh, I was so shocked. So I asked my doctor, what do I do? They told me that I need an operation that will cost me around, uh, around about 60,000. Then I went back to my husband. I told him, you know what? I have this problem. And the doctor has told me I need an operation. So I need money so that I can go for the operation. Mm -hmm. And every time I ask for the money, he'll always push me to another month 
two months, three months, nothing. He's not mm -hmm. giving me. So one day I decided, let me call the brother in the UK to send me this money. He sent me the money. After he sent me the money, he comes back to me and asks me, I, I have a problem. Just give me back the money. Help me with the money. I'm going to, to refund you. I give him. So I, I never went to, to get treated. Little did I know that he was planning to have another marriage. Wow. Already people had talked to him that I will never conceive, I'm a barren woman, and you will never get kids with that, with that lady. But I did not know. So one day, after two years, we we're just seated, he takes my things, took them to my friend, and told my friend that he never wants to see me again. And that is, that is what happened with my second marriage. She, he got another woman, got married, and got kids. It was very bad. And the fact that when I heard that it's my friends and people who are talking to him about it, I felt so bad because I was not just seated down, I was doing something. Already my doctor had told me that I will do an operation. So I was just looking for this money, of which I did not have, so that I can go for the operation so that I can be able to get a baby. So he started saying that I lied to him, that even in my previous relationship, I was the one who had the problem, and now I'm getting into this other one, knowing that I had the problem. Mm. It was so bad. Wow. I went into stigma. I went into depression. I went and j there's nothing else I could do. I would wake up in the middle of the night, just start to cry, ask God, why could this happen to me? Just when I'm thinking this is my time, then it has just gone like that. Mm. So that was it. I could not change. We tried to talk with them. The mother tried to talk to him. The friends tried to talk to him. He said he can never live with me because I'm an infertile woman. Wow. And that was it. Catherine, that is a lot for any one person to take in mm. and um, heartbreaking and we're very sorry that you know you had to go through all of that uh, but Catherine even from your experience on your line of work these are some of the heartbreaking stories that perhaps you get to hear and that children are that important to a marriage so important that people will do all kinds of things and if they're not getting what they want then they'll walk yeah and it's true unfortunately one thing I think is an assumption for many is that we can plan for a baby People think you can plan for a mate, mm. you can plan for a baby, but it's not as easy as that. Now, it's a crisis. We call that a, cri a transitional crisis. When you get married, you have a crisis of adapting. Now, you're expecting a kid, you get another crisis. Now, if for Cecilia's case, these are several. These are two now. Mm -hmm. Now, for two, it means her resilience. Naturally, human beings have a resilience of snapping back, mm -hmm. yeah? Getting with it and moving on. So her resilience has been challenged in the process. So the first time she knew, I'm good. I'm not the fault. I'm being accused wrongly. Mm -hmm. And the society expects the woman is, is the one to be healthy. The second one, now she was the one who was being blamed. Again, now the process of the resilience gets worn down. The trauma of actually realizing that she had fibroids and again not a supportive partner can make the woman Hell, hate herself because she feels defective mm. she feels there's something wrong with her so in that process again if she doesn't have good social support not necessarily even counseling just someone to lay back on okay. we expect that this person will have a bigger crush yeah and unfortunately again for most of them cannot acquire the therapy sessions. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cecilia, our time is running out, but I must get us to the place where those are two marriages down the line, a lot of trauma for you, even being battered, mm -hmm. no children. Um, how then did you get into another marriage? And also you have an organization, mm -hmm. uh, Fertility Kenya Foundation, oh. and kids now. Yeah, and kids now. Talk to us so about the good news. Uh, immediately I, I got into the relationship, I decided, Cecilia, I went into uh, a, a session myself and I told myself, I will never get married before I get a baby. So uh, there is one mission, I have to get treatment and I have to get a baby, mm -hmm. whether with a husband or not. Mm -hmm. That was me, I'm sorry. 
So what happened is this, uh, I went back to the doctor and told me that uh, we need to do a laparoscopy and then I will need to do a heroscopy something, two operations where they put cameras on you, the operator on you and uh, I saved some money because uh, it ended up being 180,000. Mm -hmm. So I went to Nairobi Hospital and I was operated. So when I was operated, I stay, he told me that I need to stay for around uh, four to five months without conceiving. And then on, the, on my sixth month, I bought uh, the, the, the test kits. Mm -hmm. I told God before the end of this dozen test kits, I want to get married, I want to get a baby. So um, I, used to, I used to have this boyfriend then, uh, my husband now, uh, Benson, and uh, during that time, I would, I would make sure that during my fertile time, I'm with him. Yes. I stayed for the first month, the second month, the third, and the fourth one. I was so pregnant yeah. and I just jumped up. I was so happy. I didn't tell anyone and I didn't go to the hospital. I didn't want to get a negative result. So every day I would wake up, check and see it's still the two strips. Then I stay for one, 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 one week, two weeks. I just, I found that it was still positive. Mm -hmm. So after seven months, that's when I decided to go to tell people. After how many months? Seven months. It was showing, didn't they already know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had called my sister after one month and she told me, Cecilia, if you have ever kept quiet, yeah. just keep quiet now. Because once you talk about it, people will start talking bad and then your yeah. baby will come out. Yeah. And I do want that scenario to where my baby will come out. Mm -hmm. So basically with, within uh, uh, nine months, I got my firstborn, Prince Kala Karanja, who is two years wow. and ten months wow. now. It was so exciting. And immediately after nine months, I got pregnant. I do want a scenario whereby it will be blocked <laughs> you again. Wanna know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I got my second born. Yeah. And uh, I have two lovely kids, China. China Lee is my second born, who is one year, three months. Wow. And now my first born, who is two years, ten months. Do you think for you getting a baby was because you had always wanted that? Or is that society made it seem that you're not complete until you have that? Or is it because of what you'd gone through with your two previous husbands mm -hmm. that they also just cemented it that a good life is having a child? Was it originally your dream or is it something put on you by society or even by your experiences? Okay, there are two things. There's one thing, I really loved kids. Even I do events and I do events for kids. Mm -hmm. For seven years I've been going for children's home. Every Christmas I take Christmas party to the less fortunate. Even this December, we are going somewhere else okay. in Donho. So you always, so loved, always kids. loved kids. The other thing was mm -hmm. pressure. I really wanted to prove to the society I'm able to conceive. So that thing really pushed me until I got that kid. Okay. Yes, I Tell wanted us, to prove yeah. a point. The Fertility Kenya Foundation, briefly, how did that come up? Fertility Kenya, it's my baby. What I'm doing right now is uh, during my struggle of infertility, mm -hmm. there's not a place I found that I could go. I didn't, I, I didn't get, I tried to, go, to Google in Kenya if there's a place that I can go and talk to other women who are going through infertility mm -hmm. and I did not get. So the only person I had is only the doctor. So what I decided after I succeeded, I start a foundation okay. whereby women will come to the foundation, mm -hmm. get to meet with other women, talk about the issue, and then they'll be settled. At least they'll f they feel that there is hope. Where can people find you online before I come in? Um, online, uh, we are on www.fertilitykenya.com. Mm -hmm. I'm also on Facebook, fertilitykenya.org. And then also you can get me on Kipande, our offices are in Kipande Road, City View Apartment, uh, door number A4. Okay. You'll find us there. Finally with you, um, Catherine, what do you tell ladies out there who perhaps are in the middle of some of what uh, Cecilia went through, they just found out they're infertile or just all manner of things are going on but all touching on infertility? What I would advise them first and foremost is accept it. Learn to accept what's happening and keep it simple. But never give up. What kept Cecilia going is that hope that it's possible. But there's a good question you asked. Are you doing it for the society mm -hmm. or is it for you? If the pressure is from society, you should learn to accept yourself because the society will always demand from you yeah. as a woman. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing it to please other people, revaluate. 
do it for yourself. Yeah. If you are still hoping and there are no medical constraints uh, such as uh, abnormalities with the woman organs like the uterus, the ovary, ovarian or endomitis, stay there and have hope. Yeah. It is possible with time, but as long as you stress over it, the more you stress over it, mm. the more you make the hormones have imbalance and chemical imbalances. Right. If by any eventuality you cannot have, there are options of adopting. If you really want to have the children, mm. there are options. The key thing for parting is accept yourself the way you are and know that you can move forward yeah and mm -hmm. also wouldn't it be good to get involved in such groups like what she has a foundation where you can get that kind of consolation it's, people who perhaps have gone through it and would have better understanding it's perfect yeah. that she started such because now this becomes part of the psychosocial support right. when you go it's almost like AA meetings mm. when you go and people can identify you feel at home yeah. now that the foundation is there it makes it easier for women instead of suffering alone they can join up with other women and empower each other yeah and stand strong mm. so today on your health we focused on that element of just bringing the human face and angle to uh, infertility and thank you so much for sharing your story with us i'm sure many watching this morning either can relate or can just you know sympathize empathize whatever the case but we will take this conversation further and perhaps next week now also have a doctor who can talk us through some of the various causes uh, of infertility and how to deal with how to get yourself better placed better prepared whatever it is so today just laying ground for that but we will have a doctor in studio and take this conversation further thank you so much cecilia karanja thank founder you. of fertility kenya foundation you can find her online uh, for more details if you'd like to be part of the organization and of course Catherine our psychotherapist for being with us this morning we appreciate your time that uh, is your health uh, for this tuesday it's now 9 or 1 a.m we're out of time we have to head out but thank you so much for watching it was a pleasure and our delights to be part of your morning have a lovely day remember their protest uh, today um occupy uh harambe house it is i think yeah occupy harambe house this owing to the state of insecurity in the country or at least the incidences we've seen in the past few days we'll follow that for you and other stories that we're covering in the newsroom today catch our subsequent bulletins for that and more have a lovely day bye